Welcome to Bees on Main, Rootminder's global production facility here in beautiful downtown Stoughton, Wisconsin. And joining me again today is uh, Theo Hartman, who is at Dandelion Springs uh, near Richmond, Virginia. Hi, Theo. How are you doing today? Good, thank you. Good morning, Rich. We have dandelions finally coming up in Wisconsin. How are things in uh, Virginia? Well, we, we have um, the first blooms uh, uh, coming up. We have quite a bit of um, of plants out there that are blooming. The, the leaves on the trees are coming out. So spring is in full swing right now. Well, great. So today we're going to talk about assessing uh, hive colony population uh, using temperature. I know that each little bee is emitting a little bit of heat. And I know that when they uh, act as a colony with the brood there, they try to thermoregulate it to 95 degrees. Uh, how do we use that information to, to figure out what's going on with our hives, Teo? Um, we can do a number of things. Uh, there are um, There is a clear signature when you have uh, bees in a box versus a box that's empty. And I, will, I want to show you an example of a swarm trap. This is an example from last year, uh, where we can clearly see that um, the swarm trap was empty until April 22nd. And you see that the uh, swarm trap temperature inside uh, is a little bit above ambient during the day, but it comes pretty much to the same temperature at night. And then on April 22nd, a swarm moved in, and now we have a constant uh, higher temperature inside the box versus outside. And this is a clear indication that there is a heater inside that produces this, this heat. So a very, you know, it's very distinct when, when this happens. Yeah, that's uh, that's really awesome, Teo. And you guys are already having swarms. We we aren't quite there yet, but uh, hopefully we'll be. Uh, so I imagine that hive construction also affects how big of a difference you see between outside and inside temperature. Uh, what can you tell us about that? It's not only hive construction, but also what's what's inside the hive, and this is why. Uh, I am running a, a control hive, which has uh, no bees in it. It's, it's uh, two eight frame deep boxes uh, and, and um, the frames actually have bags of water uh, that's, that simulate the thermal mass of the honey and the, and the, bi uh, the biomass inside the, the hive. And here now, if you compare this to the empty box we've shown uh, before, uh, you see that the box heats up during the day and at midnight where the vertical lines are, uh, the, the difference between inside and outside is not zero because these bags of water emit heat that, that was stored during the day and, and uh, they give up heat and slowly cool, cool down overnight and then warm up uh, on the following day. And it's interesting to see that the upper box, the yellow line, gets warmer than, than the lower box, uh, simply because it, the, the sun is beating onto the uh, copper roof. And, and I guess that's where most of the heat comes from. And now we're looking at, um, <clears throat> at a, a series of, of, of charts here, which are from my nook yard, where I have 15 nooks and they're all the same in construction, well, not quite because there are some deeps and some mediums, but they're all five frame nooks, uh, a single box. And when we look at this, this is a, a nook with, which is queenless, just uh, started a few days ago. And we see that there is a temperature difference uh, consistent day and night, which means the bees in there, but the bees are not able to thermoregulate and they do not thermoregulate this box uh, very well. We have peaks above the brood zone during the day and we are clearly below brood zone at night. When we compare this to an overwintered nook, this is a, a nook from last year that was brought through the winter and we have, um, we have lower peak temperatures during the day and we have higher um, uh, valleys, uh, higher um, temperatures at night, which means there are more bees in this box and they're doing their best to, to try and thermoregulate. Now, an easy way to compare what these, these uh, nooks are doing is to go into a summary view. And here we see all the nooks overlaid 
it, it gets busy. However, you, when you hover over uh, one of the one of the um, this is the overwintered one F13, and we can clearly see that uh, they're warm at night, warmer than the others, and the peaks during the day are actually reduced by the bees and then fanning to try and maintain that temperature. So these are some of the basics that we uh, we see when when we're looking at temperature, and there are other effects we'll hopefully uh, dive into. Uh, later on, not today, but uh, there are many sessions coming up where we're going to talk uh, about all this. Like Teo said, uh, in the coming weeks, we'll be exploring more. We'll get into swarms and into brood temperatures and those sorts of things. And we've uh, had requests for humidity and weight and a little bit more explanations. Okay, so uh, that's it for this week. Uh, join us again next week. We'll be exploring uh, other topics and, and that sort of thing. Uh, Theo, thank you. For... Th thank you, Rich. And uh, if you out there have suggestions for topics, please feel free to email us at support at broodminder.com and uh, we will certainly uh, try and pick up on it and, and uh, bring these, these topics uh, to, to our weekly blog. Thank you and have a nice day. Okay, and remember, every hive counts. <laughs>